Hello to everybody. For those who don't know me, I'm Oscar, working at SUSE and doing um, memory management stuff. And today I would like to discuss a uh, last minute topic I came up with last week. And it's about the potential or possible deprecation of sparse MIP in favor of the BMAP flavor and whether we can do it or not, and whether we can see any ship stoppers and whatnot. So these two are memory models that were suited for uh, systems with sparse memory in opposite to flat mem. And the only difference or fundamental difference between the two of them is that sparse mem bmap what actually does is allocates a virtual chunk that represents the memmap array for the present memory we have in the system, which means that since we now have a like a, a base array, functions like page frame number to page and vice versa and folio page index and so on are a matter of a simple addi addition or subtraction of the P page frame number or the page from the BMAP array. And that speeds up um, some things because on the contrary, on those environments that don't have BMAP enabled and run on config sparse mem only, you have to, whenever you, you want to convert to the page frame number to the page, you need to get the section number. And for that, you have to go and check the page and the flags and then get the mem map from the section and do some additional subtraction. So it gets fairly a bit more complicated. So as you can see here, with the map is just, uh, it's quite simple. Uh, for some and reason, we do not see your switching slides. Not sure whether the problem is on our end or uh, we still see the initial slide. Okay. Uh. Now we can see that. Okay. Hmm. Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, as I was uh, saying, um, these two are, are the two examples of the sparse mem bmap and the sparse mem and how the two of them get the page and, and the page frame number. And as you can see, the sparse mem is, is more, um, it's more um, involved. But uh, that uh, speed up is not for free because on BMAP we need to allocate that virtually uh, virtual chunk uh, for the um, for the memory. So we did this means that for each section or for each present section we need to allocate pages per section multiplied by the size of the struct page because this will be what describes the, um, the memory we are adding. And for instance, on x86 64 bits, that is two megabytes per section. And on MIPS, which is not really running on BMAP yet, but I wanted to do some research. You can see here the, the cost, the memory cost of enable BMAP depending on how large is the section because uh, and how large is the page size because the, depending on those both um, the page pages per section will will uh, be different and I did some research this is these all are all architectures we currently support. I, I think I didn't miss um, anyone here. So, and as you can see, there are some architectures 
which are running on flat memory model, which are not really um, of a concern here. And then we have um, other architectures that have both sparse mem um, and sparse mem bmap. Those Oscar, are not really. Oscar, sorry. Yes? Uh, ARM has flat mem. This is Mike here. ARM has flat ah, okay. mem. And I think P risk and risk five also have flat mem. Yeah, but, but uh, I was checking before the source code of Parisk at least, and I I could see some sparse uh, config config sparse mem definitions there. That's why I added into that. I maybe that was an oversight uh, from my side, but uh, because I did do double check that at least for Paris, but as I said, it might be a mistake on, on my side. So, um, so, okay. So what, what, what we are really um, um, concerned here are those architectures that support sparse mem map, sparse mem map but not really the virtual mem map. Uh, like um, uh, SH, MIPS, uh, Paris, I think, and to see if they can gain the um, ability to to be able to run on virtually memmap uh, model. So if I got it right, uh, and maybe ARM is out of the table, I'm not sure, but at least we'll have to convert three or four architectures to row sparse BMAP um, code. And I, I've been thinking about this. Of course, this actually um, really needs some knowledge uh, from those maintainers of these architectures, because my knowledge on those tends to zero, to be honest. Uh, but my my main concern was can we because if we want those architectures to be able to operate on virtual memmap we'll have to at least have an address space for for the virtual mem memory map array and i was thinking whether we can have that space like as we as we do for modules or for bmalloc whether those architectures can gain another other space for the virtual memmap array, which I think this is the, 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 one of the most important parts because otherwise it's kind of out of the question. Like for instance, for x86-64 here, you can see that in the documentation, we have this space reserved for the virtual memory map and the same should be done for those architectures that we want um support for virtual memory map we even get there uh can you summarize uh, what's the actual reason to get rid of that uh, or why we should be even considering that and uh, you mean getting rid of sparse mem yes uh, well to me it seems like um kind of a duplicate thing. I mean, both were added really long time ago. And I, I think that the reason mm, we didn't switch over to virtual memmap sooner is because of the memory cost of it. And at the time it was added, I think it was added in, dot, in the 2.6 version. Maybe memory was more of a concern that is today. Also, we do maintain a non-trivial amount of code that differs. I mean, we do have functions that are named the same, but depending on whether we are operating on virtual mem map or, or just pass mem, we do different things. So it's kind of a, sometimes a pain in the ass to maintain that. So I think it should be, unless there is any fundamental issues, it should be ready to go. I mean, I cannot think of any 
use case that mm, that you should that you will have to stick with the older version of that. But that brings me to the to this uh, to this sort of um, this um, list of questions that that the most important one is whether we can enable virtual memap on those architectures that miss that because otherwise this is just off the table. Which four then, exactly are these? This is David, by the way. <laughs> Which four architectures? You mean which? So architectures, if I got it right, Mike said that Paris runs on flatmem, but at least I see sparse mem code in, in inside architecture Paris. But let's say I got this right, and maybe ARM not, but at least MIPS, Paris, and SH should be the ones that are converted because those are the ones who can operate on sparse mem and sparse on sparse mem but not on the virtual mem map so so i think one issue and is that well, some of these architectures are 32 bit i think mips is like 32 bit and 64 bit and the v mem map might be problematic i'm not sure but the question is if we should continue supporting sparse mem for 32 bit architectures at all or if they should go to flat mem because uh, in the good old days for example we supported memory hot plug on 32 bit but that has been removed and that is one of the driving forces for sparse mem so th that would be one thing to look into if for example for mips 32 if we could go to flat mem if sparse mem v mem app is not an option it's mike here so arm for, from what I remember, ARM used sparse mem for really sparse. They like had machines with two 64 meg memory banks spread uh, at a large distance. So they used sparse mem for that. It was not related to memory hot plug at any way. So on 32 bit they on used 32 okay, bit. Okay. And the, all these uh, uh, 32 bit architectures have this the same issue that you need the chunk of virtual address space, which would be essentially taken from vmalloc space. There is no other place you can, uh, and you can take uh, the x86 uh, 32 bits to the list, by the way. Okay. So, I, I would so get for, back to uh, where the sparse mem actually uh, stands in a way. And I, uh, it was my experience, and I guess it's your experience and uh, David's experience as well, is that it's probably the biggest pain for the uh, memory hot plug, because then you have two separate paths that you have to take care of. So uh, rather than uh, spending a lot of time on uh, bending those awkward architectures over to use some uh, memory model that might not be fitting them, would it make sense to simply say that we do not support hot plug on sparse mem at all and simply just make it uh, vmem up only? Would would that help? Um, and would that be less of a work? I well, thought I we already we'll... did that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> no, we didn't. Uh, the hot plug is still sparse mem. Ah, right. Mem, there is another mode where x86 supported it without sparse mem, and that was removed, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that could be done, and I guess that at least maybe will force the 32-bit architectures. Yeah, but 32-bit architectures don't support hot plug anymore, right? So that's. Uh... Uh, and yeah. I don't think that we I... would be losing much uh, to uh, lose uh, memory hot plug on. Uh, pay risk or uh, uh, I cannot even imagine hot plug on MIPS, not to mention ARM. So uh, maybe we will just force those architectures that uh, do both to stick with a single one and not, let's say, to not be really thrilled about adding new features to sparse because those architectures are niche anyway. Um, and it would allow you as a memory hot plug maintainer to have less of a work uh, when adding new features to the hot plug, which is something that we do care about. Yeah, that's that's one thing. Uh, but I, to be honest, I was um, I was keen on on 
getting rid or at least to see if we could get rid of PassMem altogether. But yeah, I mean, those architectures are quite old. I'm not sure if they can grow. Another feature like SparseMem, virtual mem map. I mean, maybe they could, cool, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's tricky because for the 64-bit architectures of for, for so for the 64-bit model for those architectures that might not be that uh, big of a problem, but for the 32-bit where the address space is more constrained, having to add yet a new one to represent the virtual memory map, that might be quite difficult. So, yeah. Oscar, there is another thing that it's possible to try. I don't know how architecture maintainers will, maintainers will react to that. But uh, for instance, ARM can do flat mem uh, that is by itself sparse. It can release parts of the flat mem memory map and essentially have a flat mem memory model with a, that has properties of classic sparse mem. So then you have holes in there? Uh, yes, you have flat mem with holes. But is the flat mem uh, code related to getting the page frame number, whether that is valid or not? Is ready to uh, you well to well when you create flat mem you do a big allocation from mem block and then you freeze the middle in the from it. The, that's how it works on ARM. Uh, okay. So maybe it's possible to do the same for MIPS or PA risk. I don't I don't know really. Yeah, uh, I mean I. I was uh, I reached out before to the MIPS architecture uh, maintainer to see if this is something that can move forward in there, just to get a little bit more insight. But I didn't get an answer yet. So, well, at least I mean I didn't consider the 32-bit model problem. So that's. Uh, that's uh, one of uh, the ship stopper I was talking about earlier. So, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that that could be a problem. I mean, yet deprecating it for memory mo uh, memory hot plug, yes, it's it's nice, but uh, I I I wanted to go even farther, but yeah, it seems that mm, it's it's not as, as straightforward as. I thought it to be so. It would be still nice to try that. It seems like a nice project to remove uh, quite a lot of code. Uh, but I guess that first step is to deprecate it or to uh, not allow a hot plug on, on that memory model and make uh, quite a, a lot of further development easier. And if you want to spend more time on that and talk to maintainers, uh, that's probably good as well and reduce the number of architectures that really use that memory model. So even talking to other um, uh, architecture maintainers that do support both, whether they can simply drop uh, support of uh, sparse mem in favor of the VMAM app. Because that sounds like something that should be really easy, achievable easily. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, why um, one of the one of my questions here is that um, for those architectures that can operate on both models, I, I, I wanted to ask whether there are any use cases that really need to stick with a sparse mem model for some reason. And maybe I thought in a really, really, really tight memory environments where you cannot really effort even spending two megawatts per section, for instance, but mm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe that, as you said, is a, is a good way to at least move it forward to see if those architectures that support both can at least switch over definitely to the virtual mem map. And that will, at le I guess, put some pressure on the other ones, maybe. Oscar, there is a, like, if yeah. you take uh, x86, it's vmap, vmap map only for 64 bits and classic sparse for 32 bits. 
and for 32 bits it will be hard to find the virtual space probably that was the reason they didn't implement it uh, as we mem up and for instance PowerPC probably supports uh, sparse classic for embedded flavors and the vmem up for server flavors yeah i think you're right yeah well, well, uh, and, yes. and just for the record pa risk wiki has a vmem up in there to do so <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's a nice project to take on <laughs> Okay, yeah, but uh, okay, uh, thanks for, for that. Uh, that was something I did not consider. Uh, I thought that um, I didn't look, but I uh, straight, um, I plain assume that at least uh, some architectures for 32 bits were uh, are working on virtual memmap, but it makes sense because of the constraint uh, address space. Uh, but at least it's uh, something to consider uh, for the future to do more research and see, I don't know, maybe with some tweaks here and there we can slowly force, uh, force it off the cliff, I'm not sure. It, it might but, be interesting uh, to investigate why SuperH supports memory hot plug. I, I, I have no idea. Yeah, it does. Sorry? The Super H, H so the SH architecture oh. enables memory hot plug. I, I cannot imagine that somebody would plug DIMMs into that. Or <laughs> <I d> <laughs> Virtual mem is not yeah. supported on Super H, that's what I know. So <laughs> but th th that most likely can be removed, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't think I they have PMEM or CXL. <laughs> Hopefully not, but uh, but yeah, uh, definitely yeah yeah. Thanks, thank you, David. Uh, that's something that I will check because I, I was also quite surprised when I when I checking it and I saw that um, it was running on sparse mem, but but yeah, um, definitely. So yeah, I, I'm I don't have anything else to share but at least i got some valuable insights from you all guys so thank you all for um, taking the time and the interest thank you oscar and with that uh, unless there are any further questions i'm done Okay, so thank you all and have fun.